What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian Noonan. Thanks for watching today's video. If you don't know about Shark Tank, it is a TV show where entrepreneurs who have a product to sell or who have built a business go on to Shark Tank and pitch their idea or their business in front of the investors, sharks, who invest their own money into entrepreneurs and businesses they see fit that are selling a high quality product and that the business has a ton of potential. Shark Tank is one of the few TV shows that I watch. I rarely watch TV, but I learn so much as an entrepreneur and business owner and as an Amazon seller from watching Shark Tank. In a recent episode that I just saw, there was an entrepreneur, two entrepreneurs who pitched an idea on Shark Tank for their product and I want to go over what that product was and their idea and their business and how it turned out. You know, I can learn a lot and you can learn a lot from what happened in the Shark Tank and what these um, entrepreneurs faced going into the uh, Shark Tank and what they came out with. They ended up not getting a deal, but I want to break down. There's some important takeaways that I want to share with you, such as intellectual property and getting brand registry for your product to protect your product. Coming up with a totally new idea that's never been on Amazon before. Is that a good idea? Competition and knockoffs that you'll inevitably face. Hijackers and Chinese sellers trying to rip off your idea or sell it on Amazon um, under cutting your listing or your price. You know, these are all challenges and obstacles you will face as an entrepreneur. And I want to show you what these entrepreneurs face and what you're going to potentially face becoming an entrepreneur and an Amazon seller. You know, the whole idea of launching products is to replace our nine to five jobs, to uh, set up a business that generates income every single month, that we can scale one or two or three products into a great brand that we can potentially sell for hundreds of thousands of dollars or even millions of dollars later on. And I think you'll get a lot of value out of today's video and a lot of good lessons I'm going to share, like Chinese um, knockoffs, competition, uh, building a real brand that you can scale to millions of dollars per year in revenue, getting a patent in China, all of these different types of things I want to share. And you know, building a real brand is not that difficult. You can launch one, two, or just three products and build a real scalable brand. And what I've seen that works the best is if you can find a product that there's a problem that the product solves, the products that have made me the most money and that have done the best are products that solve a problem, products where I can source and manufacture the product for an, a decent price and still make a good profit margin, and that there's a wide enough market, a common sense product, that there's a wide enough market for me to sell it to and scale my product into a, a brand. And I wanna share how you do that Maybe you have specialized knowledge about maybe you recently had a baby and you're in the baby market for newborn products. Maybe you love cooking in the kitchen and dining niche, you can launch a product. Maybe you like entertaining or patio lawn and garden and there's products in there that you can launch. Or maybe you're in the healthcare field as a nurse and there's products that you come across every day that you use that you could potentially launch. That gives you an advantage, number one, if you have specialized knowledge or a passion or a skill set behind a product those also can make you a ton of money. So having a little bit of passion or knowledge about a product or category can really pay off as well. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Brian Noonan. I'm a full-time Amazon FBA seller and I started this YouTube channel about six months ago to help Amazon sellers start profitable Amazon businesses and launch the right products. I share course level information on my channel that others would be charging for and I don't charge anything for it. I drop weekly videos, if not two videos per week, covering topics about how, how to succeed selling on Amazon. And uh, if you are new, please subscribe. I love seeing those new subscribers come in. Hit that notification bell so you can be notified every single time I release a new video, just like this one. And hopefully halfway through the video or even now, you'll hit that thumbs up button for me because it helps support my channel, helps me grow, and helps get my message to more people. We're gonna jump into my computer here and I wanna show you kind of what I took away and what you can learn from these entrepreneurs who pitched their idea, what the product was, what their business was, and how it turned out. Coming up.
All right, guys, welcome inside my computer. I'm going to go right into the Shark Tank pitch, the intro that these entrepreneurs made when they introduced the sharks to their business and their product opportunity. This was a product that solves a problem. There's a mission behind their company and their brand. And I just want to break down. I'll go step by step and show you what idea they pitched, what their product was, what the sharks had to say about it. Did they get a deal? Did they not get a deal? Spoiler alert, they ended up not getting a deal. And then I want to also show you a news report that was actually done about this company and about this product and show you what Alibaba is doing to help Amazon FBA sellers who come up with a brand new product or idea. Hi Sharks, my name's Emma. And my name's Miles. We're offering 5% of our company, Final Straw, for $625,000. Ooh. Ooh. Sharks, maybe you've noticed that our oceans are filling up with plastic trash. Much of that trash is made of a seemingly harmless item, the plastic straw. Straws may not seem like a big deal to you, but they're one of the top items littering our beaches. And some of the more sensitive ocean creatures are pissed. <laughs> <laughs> what is this place? Shark tank! <laughs> sharks, oh please. <laughs> oh, you think sharks are scary? I'm more freaked out by the 500 million straws we use every day in the US. Yeah. It's a big number to get your head around. Here's what it looks like every second. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Sharks, this is 5,700 straws. This is how many straws we use every second in the US. Plastic straws are going out of style. They're getting banned in cities and countries around the world. We thought there had to be a better way to design the drinking straw. So we did. This is Final Straw. Final straw is the world's first reusable, collapsible straw. It folds up and fits in a case the size of a car key and is small enough to go on your keychain or in your pocket. The anti-plastic straw movement is growing rapidly and we are at the forefront. Sharks, the mermaids need our help. So who wants to help us suffer responsibly? We have samples? We, we have do. samples. Okay, so I'll pause it right there. So they are uh, launching a product that is a reusable, collapsible straw. Now, if you do a search on Amazon or Alibaba, you're going to see dozens of these. This Shark Tank pitch and this uh, episode was filmed back in 2018, and they claim to have the one and only or first collapsible reusable straw. The mission behind their company and their product in general is to replace all these plastic one-time use straws from hitting our landfills and our oceans. So not only do they have a good product, it's a high quality, collapsible, reusable straw. It costs $20 to, uh, $20 to the customer and they source it for $5. But there's a mission behind their company, which is to solve the environmental uh, plastic concern of all these straws ending up in our oceans. So that also uh, reminds me of another opportunity, which is the biodegradable, environmentally friendly category or niche on Amazon. That is not going anywhere. Biodegradable plates, reusable bamboo plates, wood plates, um, paper, paper goods that are biodegradable. The biodegradable uh, niche or opportunity, reusable grocery bags, reusable produce bags, those product opportunities and that niche are not going anywhere anytime soon. Jeff Bezos, in fact, just a couple weeks back, donated $60 million to, to, to fight environmental issues. Jeff Bezos himself, the owner of Amazon, donated, put $60 million of his own money into environmentally friendly causes and actions. And so the biodegradable, environmentally friendly niche and opportunity is not going anywhere anytime soon. Okay, so there we go. That was the intro. That was their pitch. Um, now let's look at the middle part of their, their Shark Tank pitch and see what happened. We appreciate that. Here's the thing about $20. Uh, so Damon John, the um, creator and inventor of FUBU, the clothing line, uh, dropped out. He believed that it was too competitive. Okay, she just mentioned that what her customers are saying and what they are standing behind and what they believe in is the same mission that that company or this business or these entrepreneurs have, which is to save reviews are saying they're going to save $20 to be able to buy this product so they're not contributing to this environmental crisis that we have. 
Now, I'm not trying to get political here about, you know, environmental issues or anything. I'm just simply showing you this product and these entrepreneurs, how they did. And then I want to relate that to you launching a product on Amazon, selling an FBA product and creating a real brand and a business that will generate income and cash for you and your family months and months and months consistently. Also, reviews are one of the most important parts of our Amazon FBA business. The more high quality and good reviews we can get, the more money you will make. And if you can get your customer to connect with your product, to believe in your product, you create an amazing buying opportunity that's even more powerful because your sales are really going to skyrocket. Okay, now I'm going to show you the end of their Shark Tank pitch. Um, and this is Mark Cuban. And let's see what he has to say, who is one of my favorite sharks. Good luck. Look, I have lots of concerns. Competition and knockoffs, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. So Mark Cuban, billion dollar investor, his number one concern, he had questions and he was worried about competitors and knockoffs. Any product you launch on Amazon, you're going to face competition. You're going to have knockoffs or competitors come into the marketplace. The idea is we want to set you up and set our business up to be protected. And one of the best ways to do that, this is not required in the very beginning as you do product research or you launch your product. Once it starts selling well and you're making profits, I highly, highly suggest and recommend you reinvest some of those profits and that money you're making from that business into the Amazon IP Accelerator Program. This will get you, that's the Amazon Intellectual Property Accelerator Program. It's $800 to uh, $1,200 for the cost of this program, but you, you will get brand registry in only two weeks and a trademark. And this is huge. This will provide protection against hijackers, protection against competitors, protection against knockoffs. I'll make you an offer, but it's going to be a sharky offer. I'll give you the 625, but I want 25% of the company because I think you have a lot of question marks in terms of the business side, the finances side, the online yeah. side, you seem to have done pretty well. Well, and I think to the marketing, you know, what is so cool about our product is people's passion behind yeah. it. Don't yeah. talk your way out of it. No, I'm business. not gonna talk my way out of it. So Mark, we really appreciate your offer. You know, a, the valuation you gave us is $2 million and we've already done more than that in sales in two months. So what we'd like to offer you is $625,000 for 12.5%. Oh, thank you. I'm out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All the best, guys. Good luck. Okay, so they walked out without a deal. I think one of the main reasons they didn't get a deal, um, they had raised $2 million on Kickstarter, uh, which is a crowdfunding source where you can put up your product, your idea that you haven't had manufactured yet, or you're just getting started and get crowdfunding People will invest their money into your product or your business or your idea to help you fund it. Now, I think one of the main reasons these two entrepreneurs walked away without a deal was because if you go on Amazon or Alibaba right now or even back then when this video was taped in 2018 or 2019, they said that they were the first and only collapsible straw. There is hundreds, hundreds of listings for collapsible reusable straws. And I believe they walked away from a deal because they valued their business too high and number two, because of the number of competitors and how much competition there are for this product. They have a great product. They were able to source the product for $5 and sell it for 20. That's a good margin, even with FBA fees in there. But they just were not able to get a deal, I think, because of competition and because they value their business too high. Now I want to show you a news article um, from Nightly Business Report about this uh, this business and this product started out as the proverbial American dream final straw, which makes an environmentally friendly straw raised nearly two million dollars in crowdfunding. And it was even on Shark Tank. But the dream turned into a nightmare unfolding across the globe in China. Andrea Day has our story. This is Final Straw, the world's first collapsible, reusable, totally badass straw. A totally badass idea. A straw designed to save the planet and set to make millions. Emma Cohen and co-founder Miles Pepper even pitched the idea on Shark Tank. Not in my wildest dreams could I have ever have thought that we would have done anything like that. While attorneys worked to secure patents and trademarks for the invention, the team launched... 
Okay, so right there, they were trying, to, they did invest into patents, attorneys, getting trademarks, all of that to try to protect them. But what you will see in a minute is that it really, really didn't work. I'm all for coming up with a new product idea that you can bring to the market, but just not for your first product. For your first product, you'll want to find a product that's already selling well on Amazon's platform and then differentiate the product, improve the product, put your own unique twist or design onto it reach out to suppliers and get it made and tackle something that you're able to execute and actually launch versus trying to come up with a totally new invention or product that's never been on Amazon before. That's risky because that product has never been on Amazon before and we're not sure that it will sell. Now they went through and got trademarks and patents and, and uh, spent a lot of probably 50 to $150,000 on attorneys. All of that is not required for us starting an Amazon FBA business. Launch their idea on crowdfunding site Kickstarter. We're just hoping and praying to solve enough straws that we wouldn't have to make them ourselves. But the little straw went viral. Within 48 hours of launching the Kickstarter, we raised over $200,000. And it didn't take long before backers shelled out nearly $2 million in funding. But as the cash rolled in, backers weren't the only ones taking notice. You can just... Uh-oh, where'd it go? <laughs> It went here to factories in China who were ready to rip off her big idea. It took us about nine months to create the tooling, get the product ready to manufacture. They were able to do it in a matter of weeks. Okay, so this is a huge concern for us Amazon sellers. It took these entrepreneurs to come up with this product and this business over nine months to get the tooling, to find manufacturing, to come up with the prototypes. Nine months of work. Now, usually it'll only take us a few months to find manufacturers and launch the product, but it took these entrepreneurs nine months, and within a matter of weeks, knockoffs and competitors over in China were able to replicate this product and bring it to market for sale. She had no clue anything was brewing overseas until she spotted fakes for sale online at major retail sites and phony web. So right there, she's on a website. I'm not sure if this is her actual store, or her website, what I believe that is right there on her screen is a Shopify store. A Shopify dropshipper is selling this collapsible reusable straw that they probably found on Alibaba or AliExpress and they're selling a knockoff or a fake of their product and they probably are making a ton of money. Websites that even ripped off images of her dog burrito. These straws sold like crazy all the time. We get return requests to our customer service for fake products and people think that they bought it on our website on the site up. so that was really interesting right there too so she was comparing uh their product which is on the left standing up versus this product is a fake and you can see it doesn't stand up on its own and people think that they bought it on our website on the site alibaba we found plenty of listings for what looked like final straw knockoffs this factory saying ready to ship to the united states for just dollars a straw and the description looks familiar totally badass totally badass straw we reached out to a woman listed as a contact for the factory but she declined to speak with us we sent a team from cnbc's beijing bureau to shenzhen china it's just outside of hong kong and where other companies are listed on alibaba the team discovered at least one was not at the address shown online we tracked down a manager for another business advertising the straw online. He agreed to talk only by phone. He admits the idea for the straw that's being made at his factory came from a crowdfunding site online. So that supplier is admitting that they knocked off a successful product, the final straw, from the crowdfunding source, which means those factories or those Chinese manufacturers are monitoring which products are trending and taking off in the United States, which is kind of scary. And that's why it's so important to protect yourself. And you don't need to get a patent, but absolutely, eventually, once you can afford it, brand registry and a trademark. Bruce Chin is a product designer in China and says even his own work has been ripped off by local factories. Without the uh, uh, Chinese uh, patent, so this designer, this inventor right here, who's located in China, just mentioned something really important, which is the only way to protect yourself over in China from getting ripped off is to get a Chinese patent. 
Now, this is going I I am not familiar myself with I have never got a Chinese patent, but this individual is saying the only way to prevent other manufacturers and suppliers from ripping your product off is to get a Chinese patent or hire a Chinese attorney to patent your idea. That's something you can look into and see if it's cost effective for you and your business, but I just thought that was really really interesting. We went to Kickstarter's headquarters in Brooklyn to see what advice they give new creators. It depends on the product, but if you're coming to Kickstarter to raise funding, you probably want to have all of your protection in place before you launch. That is very important. You know, once you launch, your product is out there in the world. We scheduled an interview with Alibaba, but the Chinese e-commerce site canceled just hours before and sent us a statement saying in part, Protecting the IP of rights holders around the world is critical to our business. We remove any IP infringing listings, period. Rights holders can enforce their IP rights outside China, U.S. patent rights on our cross-border platforms. So that's interesting. So Alibaba is saying they will remove um, any manufacturer or supplier who knocks you and your product off and you have the IP rights to it or the intellectual property trademark Alibaba will help you um, uh, take these uh, competitors and knockoffs down. Now, that's interesting because if you go on um, Alibaba right now and type in reusable collapsible straw, you'll see dozens, if not hundreds and hundreds of knockoffs of final straw still on their website. After we contacted the online retailer, Alibaba began helping Final Straw, including removing fake listings. I know that this has taken millions of dollars from our bottom line. For Nightly Business Report, I'm Andrea Day. So that last part was really interesting too, saying that Alibaba is now working with Final Straw to take down listings that violate their uh, intellectual property trademarks and patents, which is very, very uh, good. You know, building a brand is, is really important for, for being successful selling on Amazon. One thing that I look at that's so important that I talked about in the intro to today's video was, you know, thinking long term and building a brand, finding a product that you can do well with and tackle for your first product is what I recommend versus trying to come up with a product or an invention that's never been on Amazon before. It's just overwhelming and you probably won't get it to the market because it requires so much time with tooling and prototypes and samples versus trying to buy off something you can chew and finding a product that's already doing well, putting your own brand on it, uh, differentiating it, improving it, you know, tweaking the design, putting more passion into the uh, packaging and the logo and, and just the whole buying experience and you will be successful selling on Amazon. So I just wanted to wrap up um, uh, with that. And then again, finding those Amazon FBA products, the ones that have made me the most money are products that solve a problem that source for a, for a low, you know, source for a good quality price and still make a good 30 or 40 percent profit margin or higher on so number one the product solves a problem that's large enough number two you have a good profit margin and number three you can scale this business and this brand to multiple products and there's there's a large enough market out there who is willing to buy your product i call this common sense amazon amazon fba products common sense fba products where there's a need for it that's not seasonal it's not restricted and there's no patent on it I hope you guys learned a ton from today's video. I'd appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'll see you guys real soon.